Assalamu alaikum everyone. I uh, hope you all are fine. I am Dr. Alishpa Sadal. And today we are going to have a lecture on the topic overview of assessment of fundamental knowledge. And to deliver this lecture, we have a special guest, Dr. Nafman Zubairi with us. Uh, so I hope you are fine. I am good, thank you. Alhamdulillah. So should we start now? So Dr. Alishba, should I start my lecture now, my presentation now? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Actually, so many uh, people were asking about uh, this uh, uh, Canadian exam system and uh, how it works. So I have made a small presentation for you and how the system, the whole system works. So here we uh, go. Sir, can you listen to me? Yes, I can. Okay. So we will be uh, discussing about how the assessment of fundamental knowledge exam, it was being conducted in the past and now how post-COVID new challenges and how this exam has been uh, made uh, in such a way that it is now going to be computer-based exam and is going to be conducted at the prometric centers. First of all, let's see what we want to know about this uh, exam and about the Canadian systems. So goal of this webinar is to provide the students with strategies on how to prepare for exams and how to strategically answer the multiple choice questions. Well, first of all, prepare for the exam, study, and you should follow the test taking tips. MCQ exams, apart from your knowledge, apart from the information you have, they also base on certain tips which you have to follow to answer those questions and out of which one important aspect is time management. Then you need to know how to analyze an MCQ to properly answer that question. And definitely with the improving your knowledge, the information you have, and to strategically uh, learning how to strategically analyze the MCQ. That's how you will prepare your exam and definitely control your emotions because when you are preparing for these exams, you get panicked. So all of these, they will improve your performance on the examinations. Let's see, first of all, how to become a licensed dentist in Canada. All of us who are somehow looking into the system of the Canadian dentistry, all of us have followed with this flowchart that we have two different types of categories in Canada. Those are the graduates which are coming from abroad and they are graduate of the non-accredited programs and those who are here went to the universities over here and those who are graduate of the accredited dental programs. Well, those who are graduate from the accredited dental programs like from United States or from Canada or from certain other uh, dental schools around the world like few are in Ireland and few are in Australia and New Zealand. So they just go directly to the NDEB certification process. <clears throat> they appear in the NDEB written examination and OSCE examination and then they get the NDEB certification and finally they get their provincial license and they start practicing in that particular province where they get the license. One can get license for two or three uh, provinces as well. Those 
who are coming from those countries, the immigrant dentists who are graduate of the non-accredited dental programs. When they are going to the general dentistry, at the moment we are only and only focusing on the general dentistry. We are not going to discuss about the specialty program at the moment, general dentistry. Well, they have to go through the NDEB equivalency program. Then they have to go for assessment of fundamental knowledge exam. After that, they have two paths. Either they can take two further exams. One is the assessment of clinical judgment exam and the other one is assessment of clinical skill exams. Or they can go to the university for two years or three years program depending upon the university they are joining. Like few universities they offer two years program or a few universities they offer three years program. Those are called degree completion program or qualifying programs. No matter you went to the university or you have followed the direct licensing uh, path and you appeared in two further exams that is ACG and ACS, everyone has to pass this NDEB written examination and the OSCE examination to get the NDEB certification. And finally, they will apply for the provincial licensure, the provinces they want to practice. Well, First of all, what you have to do, you have to make your profile at the website of ndebbrighttrack.com. Then you have to send your documents for evaluation to NDB and every country they have like specified. If you go to the NDB website in my previous uh, presentation, I told you how you can find out that what are the requirements of your country, the country from you, where you have graduated so you have to follow those instructions. You have to send the documents accordingly. Otherwise, they are not going to accept your documents. Well, previously it was taking a few months for the assessment of documents and all that. Now it is taking long because of this COVID thing and because of the lockdown in the past. So now we will discuss about the exam, the first exam, which is assessment of fundamental knowledge exam. People ask me how much time is required. Well, it depends what is your basic knowledge at this time, like for both the basic sciences and the clinical sciences. Some of the people, they are good within five to six months. Other people, they take up to 12 months, up to 18 months even. This exam previously was being conducted twice in a year, in the month of February and in the month of August, but, but because of COVID, this August exam that has been postponed, and now that is going to uh, occur in uh, December, on the 16th of December, actually, at Prometric Center. Everyone has three chances to pass this exam, and the passing percentile, or what they call is the score, that is 75. If you Achieved 75 means you are passed. If not, then you are not passed. Previously, they were giving two booklets because it was a paper-based exam of 150 multiple choice questions in each book. And that was covering all the basic and the clinical subjects. Then came the assessment of clinical judgment exam well, again, they ask me that how much time is required depending upon your clinical experience. Few people are good within three to four months. Other people take like up to eight months or even one year to prepare for this exam. So experienced clinicians, they take less time. Again, this exam, it has three chances and passing percentile is again 75. This exam is computer based for a couple of years now and it is being held at uh, Prometric Center. It is in two sections. Both these sections comprise of case scenarios with the multiple choice questions and multiple co correct answers will be there. Uh, even they also provide you certain periapical bite wing x-rays with the MCQs on those uh, x-rays that you have to diagnose caries, you have to diagnose calculus deposits, you have to diagnose the bone loss or uh, endodontic errors, etc., etc. 
So total there will be 150 multiple choice questions, 75 in each section. That is like at an average. Some of the uh, exams they had 152 questions, others they had 154 questions, so minimum 150 questions. There is more emphasis on the oral medicine and oral pathology as well as on the periodontology, medical emergencies, management of a medically compromised patient in your dental office. They give one to two cases of orthodontics. A lot much on the pain of endodontic origin and its management. Then you need to know about the analgesics, antimicrobials, local anesthetic. Their doses should be known to you very well. Then they ask you how this prescription is written. They show you a prescription and they ask you whether this prescription is uh, appropriate or is inappropriate. If it is inappropriate, then why it is inappropriate? What are the reasons like the patient's age is not mentioned or the license number of the dentist is not mentioned or the uh, directions to the uh, patient they are not mentioned properly or the amount of the uh, capsules or the tablets they are not mentioned properly or the strength is not mentioned properly or even the spellings are not correct so whatever the problem will be you have to identify on that pictures well then comes the assessment of clinical skills exams. It is a two days exam with a lot of stress and pressure. Again, this exam is with three chances. Preparation time depends again upon your clinical skills. There are 12 exercises to be done like class two MOD preparation, MOD filling on the pre-cut teeth, at times even they give you MODL with the cuspal buildup as well. Well, class three preparation on the anterior teeth, class four restoration in a composite, endo excess on a molar, or even at times they can give you a premolar, rubber dam application, but here you have to follow the North American standards for the rubber dam application. They tell you that for which purpose, like for endodontics, or for restorative purpose, you have to expose tooth number so and so. So you have to follow the instructions properly. Well, while you are working, the sterilization and infection control is also being checked by the invigilators of the exam that you are following the proper protocols. You are not touching with your gloved hands anything else and just you are working with your instruments and working with the patient. Record keeping is also one of the exercises, and here you have to follow the Canadian standards as laid down by the NDEB and by the provincial authorities that how to keep the records of the patient because they are very important. Well, full metal crown preparation on a posterior tooth, a PFM on a premolar or an anterior tooth, and you have to make a temporary crown on a pre-cut tooth as well. The passing criteria is on a grading system like if you have done if, and followed all the protocols as laid down by the NDEB, then you will get an A plus for that exercise or A or D or E. So there are different columns and you have you can always download that, those that criteria from the website of NDEB. Then comes the OSCE and written exam. This exam is mandatory for every dentist who is intending to practice in Canada. Whether they are direct licensed or they are coming from a graduate school, like the graduate school of two years or three years, or they are actually the four year graduates of their dental schools. It's a two days exam. Again, there are three chances to pass this exam. Passing percentile is again for the written is 75. Day one is just like the EFK written exam with the two parts, 150 items, uh, MCQ items in one part. Day two is OSCE exam with multiple stations and problem based questions or case scenarios with most appropriate answers. On completion of this NDEB awards, a license to practice, but don't guarantee that you are going to practice in Canada.
it is not a guarantee it's just a license further you have to apply to the provincial authorities to get the license for that they need certain uh, paperwork and even in some of the uh, provinces you have to appear in a ethic based or uh, a, an exam which uh, covers mostly the ethic problems and they give you some questions and some scenarios so you have to answer accordingly so they take the exam and it's an online exam web based exam the alternate path if you are not going for the direct license then you can join a dental school after your afk exam it could be two years or three years depending upon the university you are joining requirements to go to the university is either you should be a canadian citizen or a permanent resident you should have a good gpa that is very very important for university of toronto from back home from your original school then e either a uh, you should have a good score of TOEFL or a good score of IELTS. Every university they have posted on their website that what are their requirements for TOEFL or IELTS. Highly competitive to get into the university. Different seats I've just uh, the from the, like uh, 2019 intake. I have just given this whole scenario, so they could be different as well. Previously, McGill was only for the Quebec residents, but now they have opened it for other Canadian citizens or the permanent residents as well. Well, every university, they either take the bench exam or the interview. They have their own criteria. University of Toronto and McGill University, they go for the multiple mini interviews and GPA is given a lot of weightage after your EFK score and your English language test. Western Ontario, prior learning assessment exam, which is two days of practical exam with six to eight exercises on the type of not, and then there is an interview. Well, they have started their own uh, course as well for this prior learning assessment exam. So now they say that if you want to apply to a University of Western Ontario and to you want to take the prior learning uh, like this test then you need to firstly join their course and learn their way of handling the teeth dalhousie university they have one day of extreme stressful situation with two exercises on type and one written exam and an interview alberta university they invite you for five days and again very extensive practical exam extremely stressful apart from certain exercises one OSCE type evaluation is also being done Manitoba University they have two days of exam a practical and a written and an interview well Previously, University of British Columbia, they were also offering a two years program to the foreign qualified dentists after passing the EFK exam, but they have temporarily closed their, uh, this program and we don't know when they are going to restart or whether they will restart or not. Now, people ask me about the cost of direct license saying, well, you need to have the money for fee for evaluation process because nothing comes for free and NDEB charges a lot of money to evaluate your documents. Then the fee for AFK exam, fee for ACG exam, fee for ACS exam, fee for OSCE and written exam. You need study material, preparatory courses if you are joining then you have to pay their fee as well. Then for the bench exam preparation or for the uh, ACS exam preparation, dental materials will be required, your own instruments type on simulated teeth for practice and training course if you have to join one so you have to keep the cost of that as well in your mind so almost like 35,000 to 50,000 CAD just a rough idea like I'm t telling you that is the amount uh, which uh, the students they were spending in the year 2019 time required well if everything goes smooth, then the whole process takes up to 18 to 24 months, depending upon the situation. Cost for university program, there 
after like first of all you have to get your documents evaluated at ndeb then you have to pay a fee for the efk exam then study material and preparatory courses then you have to pay university fee book residence computer instruments and supplies yes before joining the university when you are applying then you have to pay the uh, application fee and some of the universities which are inviting you for the bench exam so you have to pay somewhere 1500 1600 to 2000 dollars for the uh, this um, uh, bench exam fee as well so almost up to 200000 including everything you can just look for that uh, if you have joined the dental school time required after efk one year gap is there between which they will be inviting you for the interview for the bench exam you they will assess your documents and everything and then they will start the course then it will take two years or three years for the schooling depending upon the university you have joined this system like all these systems in the world they have new challenges because of covid so we are also having challenges first of all social distancing so the number of exam takers will be limited as per requirement by the prometric center as well as by ndeb and by the city where you are taking your exam there will be gap between the seats masks could be mandatory well uh, another important point is if you are traveling from other city other province to that city where you are taking the exam then you need to quarantine yourself for 14 days at the moment this is the scenario and then you have to provide the proof of quarantine to the uh, prometric center that you've been properly quarantined and now you are safe to uh, and the public is safe from you to appear in the exam you would be required to reach the exam when you well in advance because of the slow process of making you sit in the exam before checking your ids and doing the protocols this is the prometric center and yes prometric center is a third party NDEB is using them to conduct their exam like many other uh, different authorities they are using prometric centers for conducting their exams even the American boards they conduct their exam for a couple of years at the prometric center when you reach over there they give you uh, a locker where you are going to keep all your stuff you are not allowed to wear your cardigans or your jackets only the uh, pullovers would be good you can wear the pullovers to go into the uh, center like for the in the examination area you will keep even your uh, watch your car keys everything you have to keep in the locker and the tags they will tell you whether you would be able to access your uh, uh, locker during the test or not so no access access to food liquid medicine only full access and consult with the test center administrator depending the administrator it is on his or her discretion that whether you will be allowed to access the uh, locker or not this is how the setup in <coughs> the uh, prometric centers <coughs> i think because of the COVID, now they will be definitely putting you on uh, a gap, like there will be a gap of one seat. I'm not sure, so it, we are going to see what is going to happen tomorrow, a day after tomorrow, when they will be conducting the exam for the first time of this EFK at uh, Prometric Center. Well, uh, this is the set. Uh, what happens, these uh, mostly the uh, keyboards, they are of uh, like uh, uh, very old style and there will be always a clicking sound coming from the uh, other person so they provide you this uh, these uh, headphones which you can uh, not the headphones i must say the headset actually which will uh, make this uh, sound coming from here and there uh, vanish and you can concentrate on the screen 
<clears throat> the uh, administrator, they will put their uh, password in the uh, computer <clears throat> to run your <clears throat> test and then they will ask you to check your picture, your ID and or your name and all the information. If it is correct, then proceed. Now, question arises how to prepare for this exam. First of all, the approved textbooks, the approved information which is coming from different journals, from the different uh, textbooks and the reference books, it need to be there with you. Well, if you are taking a course, then attend class over there, your instructors working hard on these uh, pre-approved and uh, these uh, latest texts and latest uh, books and journals, they have definitely condensed the courses for you. While you are attending the class, take the notes. And definitely you need to ask the questions from the instructor if something is not clear to you. On the same day when you are going to attend the lecture, review and edit your notes. And then ask you yourself those questions like if the uh, question would be coming this way or that way or what would be the other scenarios uh, in the same situation like if they have given you any for information for some young adult, what if it would be an elderly person, so what would be the dose of the drug and things like that. Well. Outline the major topics, looking at the released file that, okay, these are the major topics they are asking. Me, uh, the released file they release every year with an improvement and adding some new questions and subtracting those questions which are getting obsolete from the topics which are getting obsolete. So the latest release file at the moment, which is available is 2019. You can download it from the website of uh, uh, NDEB and all the questions over there, they are basically guidelines. They are not uh, meant that those questions will be appearing ditto in your exam. They are, those are basically giving you a guideline, okay, you need to know these major topics. Read the text selectively, review and integrate all the information you have. Well, daily review notes are very important. You can make your own note cards, flashcards, develop a study schedule, develop the study sheets, for example. Read and condense the notes to one page guides with key points. Reorganize during your, your study time so that you will be having just before the exam, like maybe 10 days or 15 days earlier, so you have very few things to revise. Over the years, this exam, it has been converted from the factual knowledge exam to the critical thinking exam. So first of all, let's see what is the factual knowledge exam. Here, the, just memorizing the information and definitions will be adequate. There will be very straightforward answers. The knowledge is from the textbook is sufficient to solve the questions and most of the questions are made by breaking the factual knowledge into two parts and the second part of the sentence that will be the answer with other options just distorted information which we call in mcq's language as distractors so like just to give you an uh, example of that the factual knowledge questions we have knowledge that two types of local anesthesias are there esters and amides and we have memorized uh, with our knowledge that the names of all the types of esters and amides and for our ease in our cheat sheet in our note sheet we have uh, made it or we just kept it in our mind that when there will be a single i in the name of the local anesthetic it will be an ester and when there will be two i's in the name it will be an amide so it will be easier for us to answer the question. Now, this is a question over here, which is a factual knowledge uh, MCQ, lidocaine, 
is an example of a local anesthetic which is chemically classified just looking at the name we know that it is two eyes okay don't waste the time it is an amide and we are good so that, that's how the questions were coming in the past in the critical thinking exam only memorizing information and definitions they are not the key a good critical thinking test will engage you in using your critical thinking because critical thinking is a process achieving greater success with critical thinking requires appropriate knowledge and its utilization in certain situations having adequate knowledge and interpreting it to apply at that certain scenario is the key and you need to practice to gain this type of uh, uh, perfection to apply uh, to like apply your that perfection your practice your knowledge everything to answer these questions say for instance we have this knowledge that the histological sulcus which is this a ideally it is 0.69 millimeter the epithelial attachment it is 0.97 millimeter this area and then the connective tissue attachment is 1.07 millimeter this area the attached gingiva biological width is b and c so if we are making a restoration which is going subgingually according to our knowledge and according to our belief it should not be encroaching the biological width if everything else is good so here to test our knowledge they have provided this question which of the following periodontal procedures is indicated on a maxillary canine that will receive a full crown with subgingival margins when the abutment has one millimeter of attached gingiva no sign of inflammation or loss of attachment everything else is correct only one millimeter attached gingiva is there so if we go back just review what we the knowledge we have we, it is one connective tissue attachment is 1.07 millimeter 0.07 millimeter is not that important so this is the ideal we are good with one millimeter of attached gingiva answer will be there is no indication that this tooth requires periodontal treatment provided you have adequate information available looking at this clinical scenario you process the information you have and then you answer the question now certain things about the mcqs most commonly used objective test questions they consist two parts a stem which is a statement or question and an answer which would be among the choices so one would be the correct answer and other will be distractors or the foils multiple choice questions they assess memory of facts details and or relationship ability to reason those are known as k type questions they require integration of the knowledge and decision making you have knowledge you synthesize it analyze the question and then you apply your information the knowledge you have to answer the question two rules to remember when taking an mcq exam budget your time wisely relax and don't panic panic is the enemy and once you have this panic attack then you will destroy your whole exam over here we have an example of k type uh, question a student suffers an injured ankle while running to first base in a softball game. The teacher examines the indicated area. The symptoms are typical of a sprained ankle. This is most important information. Typical of a sprained ankle. Although the injury may, this may is making us suspicious. In fact, be more severe. Which of the following steps should be included in the first aid administered to first aid, not the definitive aid? Elevate the injured leg, apply ice on the 
injured area, apply direct pressure to the site of the injury. So we will answer accordingly like 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 only, 2 only. So our answer will be C. Why to apply pressure on that area? Maybe patient is going to have pain. So step one, read the stem carefully and identify the keywords. Step two, you might ask yourself if the injury is more severe than what other conditions could apply. Step three, although the stem implies that the injury may be more serious, it is not definitely stated. Therefore, the first aid administered should be based on a sprained ankle. So, if we look at the anatomy of an MCQ item, it has a steam, then a lead in, and then there are options. One correct answer and rest would be the distractors. A stem, usually it is a clinical scenario, clear, unambiguous, should be long relative to options, includes all the pertinent information like patient's age, gender, clinical setting, complaints, and other important information like some previous medical history or maybe dental history, physical findings, or if some tests are performed, their results. Then comes the lead-in. You follow It follows the stem in the form of a question. Should relate to the stem. Should be answerable. Covers the options without looking at the option. And you should be easily able to, okay, now, according to my information, the uh, information I have, this could be the answer. Now you look at the options and clearly you will be able to answer the question. Distractors, each should be selected by some, therefore all plausible, none obviously incorrect. Three or four choices will be with certain common misconceptions, faulty reasonings, etc., etc. Like a patient calls you in the middle of the night who, whom you treated for some impacted third molar and you have given them some antibiotic and they say that after taking the first dose, their stomach is upset. So what you will say, will you tell them to have a Pedialyte or you will tell them to have uh, some uh, uh, yogurt and uh, take the medicine with milk or you will say stop the medicine and come in the morning and I will give you another antibiotic things like that so common misconceptions whenever the stomach is upset give some uh, pedialyte or some with the antibiotics or you have to cut now once you have started the antibiotic you have to finish it without thinking that it is not uh, uh, suiting the patient, it is giving some kind of problems, so we should stop it or not. So these are the misconceptions and what would be the actual answer you have to answer that. A well-written MCQ will be clearly worded and avoid giving clues to the best answer. Types of MCQs like true or false family, usually they do not come in our exam. If they will come, then there will be two statements and they will say that the first statement is true, second statement is false, both these statements are true, both these statements are false, first statement is false and second statement. So those will be actually those statements which are coming from your uh, books, reference books, they would be covering some very important facts. Then comes assess recall of the isolated facts. Stems must be clear and unambiguous. Options must be absolutely true. False or examinee must decide how true options are. Generally, they do not appear in your exam. As I told you, they have several flaws. Only and only factual knowledge is in the form of a statement. They will come and there will be two statements. So one statement will be false and the other statement will be true. But usually they do not appear in the exam. They may appear or they may not appear. Like over here, we have an example of true false questions. When managing patients with true latex allergies, which of the following statement is true? The sterilization process effectively removes latex proteins from the instruments handled with latex gloves. Latex protein antigens can exist in the ambient air for a minimum of 10 minutes following the operative procedures like the follow time. Emergency kits should be available that contain latex free material. This is most important and this is the most relevant 
answer. Patients should be scheduled at the end of the day to avoid any exposure to late exploders in the dental office. All like A, B, and D, they are false. C is the correct answer. All true except type questions. Many questions in the released file of NDEB, they are there. All of the following are possible effects of acetyl salicylic acid, except first of all, looking at the statement we know, acetyl salicylic acid is an analgesic NSAID. It has some problems with the gastric irritation and it is also prolonging the bleeding time. So it is also provided to those people where uh, blood thinning is required in very uh, small doses. Looking at it, we have all the information. We synthesize that. We organize our information and then we look at the uh, options. Reduction of fever. Yes, we know that it is an antipyretic apart from being an analgesic and anti-inflammatory. It does not shorten the bleeding time. The bell rings in our mind. We know that it prolongs the bleeding time. Suppression of inflammatory. But yes, it is an anti-inflammatory. So it is going to suppress the inflammatory response. Bleeding from the GIT. Yes, it has a side effect on the GIT mucosa and may lead to uh, gastric bleeding. So C, D and A, they are all true, but B is not true. So that is the answer. That's how we synthesize our knowledge and then we answer the MCQ. Another process is process of elimination. Some of the questions, they are coming from some research work or from some uh, thesis which are uh, being submitted in one of the universities and professors, they found it uh, like some interesting uh, part of it, of those theses and they construct a question out of it. Here you have to go through the elimination process if you have don't have prior knowledge about it. Process of elimination is the most effective way to improve your chance of selecting a correct answer. Eliminating firstly the incorrect answers. Details are important. Watch the subtle difference in answers choices. Use question stem to find the key text. Answer choices must be logical. If reasoning for answer choice is not correct, then answer is not correct. Say for instance, like in the incorrect answers, there will be, they uh, are trying to misrepresent a fact or multiple facts. Ignore the central issue, issue in the question. They may have some faulty reasoning. The correct answers, they will be stating a fact or multiple facts. Address the central issue in the question and they would be having a sound reasoning. One best answer family. Now these questions are also there where there will be multiple uh, correct answers, but you have to choose the most appropriate correct answer. Those are known as one best answer family. So maybe other uh, options, they will be correct, but least correct. One would be obviously not a correct or one or two would be obviously not correct options. One will be the most correct and that would be our answer. So we are going to choose that one, which is a very strong fact. We know from our knowledge, from our uh, education, the uh, text we have studied, Yes, we have studied about it, but one or two uh, authors, they have discussed about it. They were even not sure about that fact, but this is the most important thing and we will choose that. Which of the following describes the position of the needle tip during administration of local anesthetic for the inferior alveolar nerve block? Anterior to the pterygomandibular raft. Medial to the medial pterygoid muscle, superior to the lateral pterygoid muscle, lateral to the sphenomandibular ligament. Now, while reading this question, first of all, we should be having a kind of uh, information. Just a minute, let me take my pen. And we know that mandibular foramen is lateral to the lingula. So just it is coming reading over here. It is coming in our mind because we have studied and the sphenomandibular ligament is attached to the lingula. The 
uh, myelohyoid muscle is also medial to the sphenomandibular ligament coming to the mandible and it will be touch, uh, covering the inner part of the ramus and over there the outer part portion of the ramus will be here so we know that it will be lateral to the medial pterygoid uh, muscle it will be lateral to the sphenomandibular ligament the mandibular and our needle tape should reach there in order to anesthetize the mandibular nerve. So looking at it lateral to the sphenomandibular ligament that is our answer. That's how we choose our answers. Now over here looking at this schematic diagram everything is clear this is the lingula here the mandibular foramen this is the uh, this is phenomandibular ligament this is the medial pterygoid muscle this is the ramus of the mandible our path of needle is after piercing through the buccinator muscle it is reaching that area so it should be lateral to the sphenomandibular ligament and lateral to the medial pterygoid muscle and then we will instill our local anesthetic solution in, uh, in this area so that our inferior alveolar nerve is going to be anesthetized. Multiple response right answer type and multiple statements will be correct and you have to choose the best combination. This type previously in a paper based uh, exam these type of questions were not coming in the exam we don't know whether in the computer base they will give these type of exams uh, questions or not that we will come to know after 16th that uh, what kind of questions were there here which of the following affects polymerization of the visible light cured composite resin intensity of the light source definitely this is a correct answer thickness of the composite resin Again, this is correct. Proximity of the light source, definitely. Shade of the composite resin as well. Darker shades take longer time to get cured. So all these statements are correct. Looking at this combination, all of the above will be our answer. At the moment, we don't know whether these type of questions will appear in the computer-based exam or not, but previously they were not coming in the uh, paper-based exam there we were getting these type of exams and that question which we have discussed over here it was appearing actually in this form in the exam say for instance while the teeth are set in wax dentures are tried into verify the maxillomandibular records verify the vertical dimensions of occlusion uh, evaluate the statics we know that all the three statements are correct so our answer will be d all of the above that's how they were giving in the paper-based exam. So we are not sure whether it will come th this way in the exam or it will come this way in the exam. We will be sure after 16 because they are going to take EFK for the first time on computer on the 16th of December. Why these MCQs are so challenging? Many students believe that MCQs are more challenging than essay or short answer questions. The reasons are MCQs tend to test for detail. If you are not a detail-oriented person, you may find these types of questions more difficult. You cannot justify your answer only. You have to give, give the answer and answer is going to be in accordance to the key provided by the test maker. In essay type question, you can argue your point and the examiner, they can read if they think that you are justified they can give you a passing mark but here if your answer is incorrect then we are sorry so many questions can be overwhelming like 300 oh my god when you start i'm going to have 300 questions oh my god that is quite that could be quite overwhelming even though mcqs tend to be worth less than an essay question some students prefer having fewer questions to focus on there are certain myths about MCQs and those are not correct. None of the myths are correct. Numerous myths, they circulate. Pick the longest answer. That's not correct. It could be uh, the shortest one. 
more often the key will be a complete yet concise when in doubt pick c this is again not correct there is no evidence to support this advice test writers are advised to vary the location of correct alternatives randomly never change your first well definitely your gut feeling is a very big uh, and a very positive thing about your response but it does not mean that whatever has come in your mind for the first time that is going to be correct maybe th thinking again on it if you have solid rational argument for changing your initial answer then do so otherwise trust your first instinct guessing game if there is no negative marking for incorrect answer guessing could be fine but do not rely on guessing alone it is a risky venture the reason is if we look at the odds consider these odds if you had take a 25 question multiple choice test with each question containing four choices you have almost a one in a million chance of getting a c or high with guessing alone so c is not our target a is our target Preparation strategy. Know the details. MCQs tend to test for detail. You must study the material thoroughly and aim for understanding, not just memorizing. Mugging the answers of the released file is not going to serve the purpose. Process the material deeply. Cramming will not aid this process. Practice, practice, practice. Reading over your notes and textbook is simply not enough. You must practice what you will be doing on the test if your exam is clinical scenario based. Spend the majority of your time solving these type of questions. Be familiar with the types of MCQs which will be coming in your exam. Like say for instance previously these type of questions were not appearing in the exam and these type of questions they were appearing in the exam. Where only one correct answer you have to choose here you have to choose a combination of the correct choices well google is not going to be there to help you in your exam so you have to rely on your own knowledge how to the preparation is going to be changed now with this post covid situation apart from preparing for the exam we should get acclimatized to solve the exam on the computers because there is a totally different situation when you will be taking the paper based exam or computer based exam and we have done this uh, uh, research as well as we have done this uh, practically we have found out that the uh, when you change the environment from paper based to computer based the uh, students in the beginning they get shocked they take time to get acclimatized to the new situation new environment so that is why we need to solve as many tests online as possible subject test mini mocks mocks etc etc timing yourself to solve the exam is also very important how we are supporting in our uh, organization we are making internet based tests and mocks subject tests and mini mocks and mocks we have hired a software company to design a software for online tests and mocks and we are running it very successfully for last six months our support is always available 24 7 new challenges and we will face we are like trying to face together with our students so we are successfully running the show and inshallah on 16th we are going to see how our students are going to uh, perform yes in the beginning we had certain teething problems we, when we were switching from the paper based environment to the computer based environment but no frustrations and successfully we are moving finally towards that 24 7 support is there our software team as well as our, the instructors they are available 24 7 to the students and from our previous students you can find it out that's how we have constructed the online test and it is also time based. It will tell you how much time is left, how many questions are left, etc, etc. And once you are done with your exam, then it will tell you that what is your <clears throat> correct answers, how many wrong answers, and you can email the uh, result to your uh, like 
the email which you are using to log in our system then your email uh, the result will be email then you can go and review the results the results will be telling you about the answers as well as the rationale why this answer is correct what is the reason behind it why this answer so that you will be preparing properly your satisfaction is our satisfaction when you come and join us for preparation feel that you are in safe hands and this is our belief that your satisfaction is our section we will do it definitely together without any fail so over here i am done with the brief information about the afk uh, exam and those who are planning to join they can always contact me and we are starting our new batch soon thank you very much sir for your precious time uh, your lecture was really sir. helpful thank you very uh, much i am also thankful to all of you thank you sir thanks a lot everyone uh, that it's from today allah thank you very much allah.